Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How how's everybody doing this evening? Doing I'm good. I'm Pretty back good. hosting, and uh, we got a familiar face back in the studio. Who's that? Uh, you. We Is got it? big and tasty over here to my left, oh. <laughs> which would be your right on screen. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a while it's, since we've actually you and I've been together. It really has. So, yeah, it I, has. We've been busy. We have been busy. It's not fair. We live separate lives. Um, yeah, yeah, we live so close to each other. Yeah. You're so close. Well, it takes like six minutes to get but to yeah, your so house. But yeah, so far away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with us this week, we've got uh, two very talented musicians, hip-hop artists uh, from the group Inflicted. Um, Inflicted was a part of the official Lock and Load show Halloween party this year. Um, they performed at a in a house in a living room setting on Halloween this year. It was a, a great show that also featured uh, one of our friends, Rev. So, yes. mm-hmm. um, first, uh, l- tell Thank us a little you. bit about no. you guys. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank Thanks you for, for having, having us, us here. That Halloween show was so fun, by the way. Like, <laughs> I, that was crazy. Yeah. Have you guys ever done a house show like that? No. Like just no. in someone's house? Nope. No. First time. First time. Wow. <laughs> it was definitely <laughs> interesting. I mean, we we had like the '90s karaoke thing yeah. going on at yeah. the end, and Darren so, doing some lap dances. I'm not on. surprised yeah, Foster crazy. wanted to do that. Yeah. yeah, that's like that's Every, his mo for parties. Everybody's singing Backstreet Boys. Yeah, I got a yeah. video of that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Was he dancing in sync as well? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and uh, come from you guys, that that would be it was a, a much different atmosphere in the house, like in oh, the yeah. living room, than is like a more intimate setting. Yeah. And right. That. Yeah, it was it was more personal. It was you know we got to interact with the the people that we were performing for, um, you know even even more so than in in an actual venue, you know because it's kind of it's kind of louder in a, in an actual venue and mm-hmm. you know being in, in the house. I mean we were just playing beer pong with people. So yeah, and I think you guys had a guest celebrity DJ that night. Yes, yes, that was you. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Way to plug yeah. yourself on that. <laughs> so, Shameless. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Inflicted. Um, first of all, tell us a little bit about your uh, your guys' selves, uh, personal. Uh, well, we originally we're from the Northeast, from New Hampshire. Um, made a long drive out here randomly. Well, he came out here first. But yeah. we've been writing together for about... I don't even know. Fifteen years, yeah, ten years, fifteen, sixteen, something like that. I don't know. Um, but the good. name itself, inflicted. Where did that come from? Uh, I'll let you answer that one because I've got no ooh. idea. Yeah, I mean, we it we, was just there. We kind of went through a, a lot of different transitions. We were we were going through whole different tons, tons and tons and tons of names. Yo. I mean, we we were casket. Um, we were uh, Sade and Gage Sanity. And like that, well, that, that was you know, that, that was more for the the wrestling. We were doing backyard wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah Ooh, uh, I gotta keep that in mind now for future events. That right. So breaking light tubes over your head and, yep. and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good times. But I mean, we we wrote a couple. We we penned a couple verses as Sade and Gage, you know, and we've mentioned it here and there. But I don't know, like something felt right to me about the the t- the name inflicted like we were inflicted with the rhythm and inflicted with talent and you know just i was kind of going along that line and i i just ran it by him and he was just like yeah whatever man <laughs> yeah. yep so pretty much <laughs> was it the creative point just putting the numbers as part of the word or was it like something that like resemble something because i see one in three i don't know if it's like the number 13 means something or is it right that was just kind of a kind of a cool coincidence um, yeah i just did it to try to be cool um i guess we're <laughs> we're nerds so that lead speak kind of creeped in there a little ah, bit yeah. nice yeah now you guys don't use your actual names for performances you got stage names is that correct yes yeah, yeah. what are the stage names he goes by parasite yep. and yeah. i go by heckles how did you come up with those? <laughs> <laughs> well, me, Parasite, uh, I I like to get under people's skin. I bug the shit out of people. So Parasite was just perfect. I just changed the spelling up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And then for, for Heckles, um, I actually I, I got it from ICP 
from one of the booklets uh, for one of their CDs. It had two definitions. Yes, the Ringmaster CD. It it had two definitions in the in the linear notes, and um, it was heckles and macabre, and heckles was uh, to pester or annoy. So, uh, to me, I just I was like, yeah, I pester and annoy people, and I'm (laughs) kind of funny and goofy looking, and you know, so I kind of I went with that, and I I spelled it normally. Uh, to begin with, and then he's the one that actually suggested. Um, I, I switched up the spelling to is, so it's H E K I L L Z. So it's he kills, <laughs> which which but I you still pronounce it heckles. Though. Yes, yep. yeah. <laughs> and I, I get that a lot. Like, who's this he kills guy? No, <laughs> no, no, no. He it's kills heckles. my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my my first thought when when you said heckles was like. Do you have like people that like, criticize you and you just want to confront them, right? Even if it was in the middle of the act or something, it's like, what? You got a problem with our show? <laughs> well, I think. Well, <laughs> funny story about that. The the worst thing that's ever happened in the middle of a set is I actually had my boxers torn <laughs> down. Oh, uh, in the middle in the middle of a verse, actually, yeah. And that oh. was hilarious. That yeah, to everybody else. Uh, <laughs> so, needless to say, you weren't probably weren't going back there anymore. Um, <laughs> actually, know. it was one of our friends. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. friends. <laughs> no, it's uh, encrypted. Um, he's he's out of Lamar's. He's one of our buddies, and uh, we were all drunk and having a good time. And I, you know, in his defense, I did actually pull my own pants down. Um, and it was in the middle of a like a verse about like sex. You know, it was, was kind of like one of those like sexual whatever songs and. Uh, and he came up behind me and, and decided to rip my boxers down in the middle of the verse. So. Yeah, while somebody was video recording it, too. So yes, that's, yes. That just made it even better. Yeah, world Lovely. star. It's world floating around, star. <laughs> floating around out there somewhere. <laughs> um, how long have either of you been rapping? Like, collectively or, like, since like when you were young or something? How long has you guys been rapping? Probably about the same for both of us. Yeah, at least 10 years. I remember writing, starting writing in about 8th grade as a uh, kind of a way to deal with all the issues, not like issues. I didn't have very many issues. I just had a lot of people talking a lot of shit in high school or whatever. So instead of punching them in the face and stabbing them in real life, I wrote that shit down and it was a yeah. good way to, to relieve stress. Yeah. that I mean, same here. I, I started writing around the same time, eighth grade, you know, and, uh, it was actually a really big weight off my shoulders every time that I wrote. So uh, we just decided to, you know, keep going with it. And uh, of course, you know, as as with anything, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And then we de- decided, like, hey, we're actually getting kind of good at this. We should probably we should probably keep doing that. Yep. How many times have you changed lyrics from writing it down from the first time to when you're putting it into a track? Constantly. Yeah. Like I I don't. It just changes. I don't know. My brain's mushy from last night. It was a long <laughs> night. I, I woke up super hungover. Have you ever Have you ever uh, looked back and like looked at your first draft and then listened to it and you're like, "Wow, we really changed that so much." Uh, f- that's probably more so for for you. Uh, yeah. I would say. I, I tend to even change things in the booth, like make little tweaks here or there, take words out, put new words in. Um, the syllable count is one of the hardest things to get right, especially if you try to rap fast. Um, it, it's just hard to get it all to fit. You get a, you know, you write it down, and when you're writing it, reading it in your head, you don't breathe. So then you forget to write in pauses, and you run out of breath in the booth, and you're like, "Well, shit, I got to change something because I can't yeah. do this. It's yeah. too hard." So, uh, for me, I I usually tend to roll with you know what I originally wrote for the most part. I I usually don't do a whole lot of editing. Sometimes I will every now and again, you know, it'll be a line here and there. We'll say, "Oh, I should have said this word instead of that word." Um, but not not really a whole lot. That's that's more that's more him. That's that's just the brain being all over the place. Yep. Too. Out of you two, who usually comes up with the beats? Um, well, I did a little bit of our production for a while. Um, a lot of our beats currently um, are, you know, just from SoundClick or you know wherever we can wherever we can get them from but uh we do actually yeah have, we gotta shout out the boss yes yeah <laughs> we do have beats coming now from cloud nine uh which is uh in charge of diamond district entertainment which is uh, you know the label that we're uh currently with they're out of charles city and um he does production he did the horror beat 
Yeah, he uh, or he's done a, a few others. Yeah, with samples, without samples. So hopefully we got something real coming out pretty quick here. Nice. Yeah, a couple awesome. of albums. Who, who would you guys consider some of your influences in the industry? Well, definitely the Insane Clown Posse first and foremost. They're the ones that <laughs> that got us starting yeah. starting to write instead of doing stupid stuff. So yeah. Uh, and and more along the lines of that too. I just want to elaborate too, like. A lot of people think that because we listen to ICP and because we're juggalos and all this, that we're trying to like copy them with the horrorcore style. It's like no, I mean we we do do the horrorcore style, but um, it was their influence on us was more about the confidence and more about the you know like a, not a giving life a shit. Style. Yeah, not giving a shit what other people thought about you and just doing what what makes you happy. You know, um, I would say musically it was probably more of Twisted. You know, Twisted, Tech uh, Nine, Cottonmouth Kings. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, you know, Eminem. Uh, definitely. I would say even Beastie Boys for myself. It, you know, I was definitely big into the Beasties when I was young. So. Bone Thugs, Criss Cross. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Criss Cross. All the old yeah. 90s. Yeah. The good hip hop. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have you guys check your memory here real quick. First hip hop album that both of you have bought. Mine was actually Criss Cross. Yeah, totally mine too. crossed out. Cr- oh, totally crossed nice. out. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I missed the bus. Shit, oh, I used to. I missed the bus. I used to wear my clothes backwards, and my one of my first hip hop names was Crossed Out Killer. Yeah. <laughs> K O K. Yeah, and when I put K O K on things, people started calling me Cock, and I'm like, no, that's gotta, <laughs> I gotta change that. Hey Did there, you even put like the, the periods in between them? Yeah, and I put the second K backwards, so it was kind of symmetrical yeah yeah but Aww. they're still it, did, it looked cool especially on my xbox gamer tag was kok juggalo kok cock juggalo cock no yeah <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> um, yeah what, what would you guys describe your style of hip-hop and rap as if you could label it i would like to use Diverse. the word uh club killer club killer yeah because it's, it's like um we got the the club sound you know like the typical hip hop like banger sound, but we throw in the the horrorcore lyrics okay. and stuff like yeah. that. So you know, it, it sounds like a banger, but we're you know playing jump rope with people's intestines and shit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 now you guys are both uh, grew up on the East Coast and then came out here. Yeah. Um, yep. Obviously, you performed both on the East Coast and here in the Midwest. What? Uh, what do you think what crowds are harder to please like is there really a comparison or a giant difference between you know hip-hop in the midwest compared to hip-hop in the on the east coast well it's uh it's definitely different whereas you know on the east coast you have you know a a very different style and a very distinct style of hip-hop where you know uh midwest is kind of diverse i mean there's there's so many different kinds of hip-hop that are prominent here you know whereas east coast you have a lot of backpackers you have a lot of you know like people like rhyme sayers you know i know they're from the midwest but that sort of style is kind of what's more prominent back east so you know yeah you got you know all that like uh aesop rock and all that kind of stuff self-titled yeah self-titled you know kind of punchline backpack you know boom bap type shit yeah i think it's been easier for us out here too because back home a lot of those people knew us growing up and they're probably like shut up you don't rap so they don't even like try to listen yeah but out here nobody knew us so they didn't have a a way to judge us except for by that yeah not just the two nerdy kids that like to play video games and watch wrestling and they're 30 you're right (laughs) (laughs) nothing wrong with that (laughs) what led to the decision to come out to the midwest uh i uh I came out here first. Um, I was here for a year before I dragged his ass out here, but uh, I came out here um, basically uh, just it was cheaper and, you know, I was kind of not really getting anywhere, uh, kind of losing confidence in in everything that was going on for me in the East. And um, I just decided I needed a fresh start, so I I came out here. And then uh, a year later, I went back and... uh, well, you can. Yeah, he went back, and when he was supposed to come back out here, it was the, during that same week I got laid off from my job, and my lease was up on my apartment. So I just kind of said, "Screw it," and like, "Hey, I'll just I'll drive you out." And then we drove 
1500 miles in a Honda Civic. <laughs> how long how yeah. long did that take to get here? Uh it took like 2 days, but I didn't drive past 10 o'clock. I wasn't in a rush. We weren't like trying to hurry to get here, so yeah. But we so. probably could have done it in like a day and a half. Craziest thing that ever happened traveling. Hmm. Tra well, <laughs> we stopped in Weed Sport. Yep. Uh what? which what? Yeah. <laughs> That's Weed town. Sport, New York. Oh. Uh, it's probably like Weeds Port, you know, but oh, okay. on the sign, it's all it's just crammed together. So, yeah. you know, this guy uh, with his uh, herbal uh, medicinal. That's stuff, purely speculation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not trying to. Not tr his ginkgo biloba that he takes. Yeah. Uh, when we went through there, he was like, oh, <laughs> shit, if that was a sport, I'd win. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> gold <Winning>. medal. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah, that was that was pretty good. Um, other than that, I mean, I uh, not really many other misadventures uh, yeah. that I can that I can remember. Other not than a, Indianapolis. Oh, dude, that's the worst city ever. <laughs> really? Like the city probably isn't bad, but when we were driving past it, I could see for miles like the sky was just brown. Yeah. Like so, Ooh. like smog. It, it's probably the worst thing I've ever driven through. It was so bad. That we were driving through and the windows were rolled down because he was smoking a cigarette or whatever. I had him roll the window up because I would rather breathe in his secondhand smoke than the air in Indianapolis. Wow. Yeah, like it was that thick. Yeah, it was and terrible. It made me just sick just driving through. Were you like going through the industrial area? Of that? It was around it. The oh. the interstate went right around the industrial side. The sky <laughs> oh. was for real brown. Like, oh. it was yeah. bad. You guys have worked with a lot of artists over the what, 15, 10, 15 years. Um, who was the most fun to work with and why? Hmm. Like, uh, like recorded or, or yeah. like recorded live? Recorded or live, live shows. E either. Yeah. Uh, I would say live. I mean, I've had a lot of fun uh, performing with Rev recently. We He's, he's yeah. got us on some pretty fun shows. and A lot know. of the, the local acts are good. Rev, Malicious. Yeah. Uh, Ebola, Protege, uh, we're gonna on. see tonight. Yep, Protege opening for mm -hmm. Prof tonight. Um, you know, all of them got. I mean, this this whole area is just filled with so much talent. It's it's always fun. You know, it's always fun when you get out there and you know you see these guys that they just get up there and they work their ass off and you know it's just a it's a good environment. It's a good supportive environment here in Sioux City yes. and, and and that's what I like. You know, I like that a lot. And uh, and everybody's really you know like filled comfortable with each other you know pull somebody's boxers down that's <laughs> well it's, it's I, not I don't know if you want to make that like a regular yeah. thing you know <laughs> it, yeah i don't know it's not <laughs> only supportive in the hip-hop community but you'll see you know some of the the rockers showing up at the hip-hop shows yeah. yeah so whether whether your genre is country classical hip-hop or whatever you're still going out on that friday or that saturday night you yeah. know to support you know your local music scene and that's that's what i've noticed in the last two years is that here we have the closest music scene uh compared to the bigger markets such as omaha or um D denver minneapolis and right everybody supports everybody yeah it's it's really close-knit and and we've enjoyed our time here a lot uh for sure you know we definitely we're, it's always fun. I mean, even if we're not on the bill, we like to go out and hang out with people, you mm -hmm. know, and and we consider these people friends. So, you know, it's it's always fun. So I, I, I would say I would say that. I mean, just our local our local people here is probably like the best and it, even recorded. I mean, we've we've yeah. been in the studio with Malicious and, you know, done a lot of sh done a lot of shit with a lot of people around here. And, and I've worked with Protege and all that. So. You know, it's it's fun. It's fun. It's it's a really good atmosphere out here. To those listening to this interview, the question I would like to ask is, what makes you different from other hip hop artists? Um, our ugliness. Yeah, we've been told we have a unique <laughs> look. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of the main things that we get is yeah. like you know it, people see us outside of shows and stuff, and they're just like, you know, when I saw you guys walk in, I was just like, there's no way these guys. Yeah. Are rappers, you know, and and then you we guys don't stand out, and then, yeah, we get on stage, and then just people got to pick the wigs up off the floor because they drop them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We just uh, people don't expect that from us. And I think that's that's like a big strong point for us 
and that kind of sets us apart is that we don't we don't look like your typical you know rapper so and I, i'm not even sure what the hell that's supposed to mean yeah. typical yeah. rapper yeah. but i mean you you kind of get what i'm saying though you, you know just two nerds and uh, we'll go up there and fucking zelda tunics with yep. fucking mario <laughs> yeah. and luigi hats and shit and like I'll fucking stomp a car- cardboard Goomba or something, you know. <laughs> have you ever thought about using 8-bit music as part of rap? We have one, actually, um, somewhere Do recorded. We? Oh, I don't know if we ever finished it, but with the Donkey Kong beat. Oh, yeah. Conky Dong. Conky <laughs> Dong. <laughs> um, I, I forgot about that. Finished it, but yeah, we, yeah. yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what can a crowd expect from seeing you guys on stage? A lot of energy. Yeah, energy. Despite what you're seeing from me right now, uh, this is me burnt out from last night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've pretty much hurt myself every show. <laughs> yeah, lots of jumping around, lots of, um, you know, getting people moving. That's that's what we try to do anyway. You know, we, we just want people to have a good time. Besides getting your boxers ripped down, was there other <laughs> crazy moment that you had on stage? Um not not really a whole lot no not not anything crazy because i think just the initial shock of of when we when we get up there and when we do our thing you know people are usually kind of thrown back enough to where they don't even like get into the music they don't get up and jump around right away because they're just sitting there like what the tri- fuck <laughs> yeah just trying to figure out like th- like for real is this even fucking happening right now and i i think you know that kind of that kind of sets like a, a a disturbance in the air. Yeah. You know, one of our songs, "Disturbance," like there is a disturbance in the air when we're around. It just it's kind of intimidating almost. Mm-hmm. You know when we're on stage, and I I think it's because I have been told that like I'm a completely different person when I'm on stage, which is you know true. But that's because I need to get into that mind state. I need to become heckles. You know, and and it's, not just it's definitely like. A- a change yeah could we talk to heckles right now <laughs> well sure <laughs> <laughs> that's okay with you yeah you, uh, zach's not around he's not gonna yeah. rip my pants down is he <laughs> hide behind a door or something. right yeah <laughs> i think if we knew Cut that his actually, beard off. if we knew that happened before you guys came on i think we may would have contacted him was like hey you might want to come to <laughs> iowa <laughs> uh, all right so well, heckles dude. what is the best feeling you feel on stage during the, your performance? Uh, probably like the random boners. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, <laughs> well, you, you guys wanted heckles. <laughs> well, yeah, so, yeah, was, I mean, no, for, <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> no, I, like, I, I, I can actually kind of see where he's coming from because it's you know it's full of adrenaline. Your body's just in a rush. You know? well, yeah, he's he's not he's, talking about. You his don't own, know though. what's gonna happen. Oh, <laughs> he's <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I that's, I that's actually was fans. mostly mostly my own. Um, <laughs> How do you prep yourself before you get on stage? What's your motivation? Random boners. Just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I usually I like to listen to something that's more you know upbeat and you know kind of gets me into that mood of of wanting to go out and wanting to hype people up. Um, you know, and I, I think he's, he's kind of got the same thing going yeah. too. We like to, we like to hype ourselves up with music, whether it be our own or somebody else's or, you know. Yeah. I used to have really bad stage fright. I, that's kind of worn away over the years, but I would have to listen to, uh, this song by anybody killer called nervous mm-hmm. and that would kind of calm me down. And then I used to paint my face too, which kind of helped with changing my mindset into what I'm about to do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that that's how I used to do it. Now I just kind of do I've heard, it. I've heard some people use beer as an alternate to help calm people. Oh, down, that you know, that's that's, that's a bad yeah, idea. That, not, that's a bad not, idea. Not a good I, idea for performances. It's no beer. Not a good idea. Uh, but I still do it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I uh, a few is fine. A yeah, few is fine. fine. But last night was bad. Yeah. <laughs> you, feel, well, that was Captain and Sprite though. That yeah. was, Ooh, that's <laughs> not a bad combo. Tastes no, like it's tasty. Pebbles. Tasty, but uh, neither of you have ever gotten drunk on, during a performance. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yes, yes, I have. Yeah, oh, no, no, we definitely have, absolutely. Um, especially, I think at the Halloween show, uh, yeah. I rap with beer in yeah. my hand. Right, 
right when I walked <laughs> in the door, you know, they were like, yeah. hey, we're taking mystery shots. Yeah, and I'm like, what the shots. fuck is that? It's, well, what the it's fuck does it sound like, dumbass? Like, it's a fucking shot. You don't know what's in it. Yep, here's a pile <laughs> of shots. You just kind of pick one and Sorry take it. Sorry about your damn look. Yeah, <laughs> so I I don't know. I drank some really gross fucking shot. It was Jameson. And, yeah, I remember. Well, it might have been. Ooh. I don't know. No. I don't know what the hell I took, but it was it was fucking didn't I, I feel stayed, good. I stayed away from those uh, mystery shots. <laughs> have you ever gotten blackout drunk and not even realized where you woke up at? Not in, not on a show, show night. No. Yeah, I blacked out on a show night, but I knew where I was when I woke up. Yeah, it was after the show. It was actually in Sioux Falls with the rest of Diamond District. Yeah, it wasn't even our show. I just got wicked drunk. And woke <laughs> up on the hotel up, floor. And out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've I've definitely been there before, but um, not so much not so much be pre-show. Um, you yeah, know, it's my territory. It's more of like yeah, going out to other shows, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, as a group, how many albums have you guys done? <laughs> uh, officially one. <laughs> and, uh, uh, unofficially. <laughs> unofficially. Um, Probably, probably like hundreds of yeah, like mixtapes like of forty five random 50, shit. Forty five or fifty tracks for free download on our Reverb Nation site. Yeah, tons of tons of free downloads. Never really just like compiled an album together, but we we signed with some label called Murder Mass Records, <laughs> and it was just kind of some bullshit. They and probably owe me money. Yeah, right. I I mean, we thought it was legit, you know. So we were like, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll do a, we'll do an album with you guys. And uh, we we did this whole album or whatever, got like, you know, some shitty like graphic or whatever for the cover, uh, picked a bunch of songs and rolled with it. And we, I, we sold like four copies. Yeah, Platinum. it was four fucking copies. One of them was my mom. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not that, even that's lying. good like, support to have support from your family. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Well, my mom, my mom's kind of different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. to say the least uh you know people call her mama heckles because she's just you know and she's cool with that crazy. she's cool oh, we call mama Heckle oh yeah mama heckles. she's actually gonna change her last name to heckles because she's <laughs> she's divorced from from my dad and she doesn't want his last name anymore because obviously you know and she doesn't really like her original uh her birth given last name so uh she was thinking actually about being mama heckles for real hmm. the paperwork would definitely look very interesting on yes that. yeah here's a you know reason behind it i'm supporting my son <laughs> yes yeah exactly and she does too she yep. listens to my music and well our music and and says oh Shares these are it, my boys yep. we'll, yeah. we'll give a shout out to mama heckles mama she heckles, mama heckles. <laughs> she will too she i she'll post that link everywhere i swear to god what animal would you be if you could be one Oh, a fucking marmot, dude, hands down. Wow. What? A, mar was, a marmot. Quick. What, what the hell's a marmot? A marmot. Uh, uh, you ever seen Big Lebowski? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice marmot. Yeah, I, is, that's what that, it. like, fucking Russian guy carries around. It's like a, a ferret-looking fucking, I don't even know, just this weird little ferret thing. I don't know, but I just... I know what you're talking marmot. about. It looks cool, though. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, fucking marmot, dude, definitely. Why? Cause Why? it's fucking cool. Yeah, because then <laughs> I could, you know, I well probably not tell people, but I could be like, "Hey, I'm a fucking marmot." <laughs> like in my head, I would know. <laughs> it, would be, it would be awesome. Oh Jesus! The life of a marmot. How about you? Uh, please don't tell me you want to be a parasite. No. Okay. <laughs> um, well, if mythical animals count, I guess a, a yes, phoenix. That's fine. Ooh. Okay. Phoenix. Oh, there you go. Here's a lot cooler. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Can I be like a, a fucking marmot on fire? <laughs> sure, sure. All right, we'll do that. I'll do, I'll go with marmot on fire. Marmot on fire. He thinks he's Katniss. If, <laughs> actually, I was gonna do that in my next question. If you could swap places with a celebrity for a day, who would it be and why? Hmm. Triple H. Oh, hands down. The Stephanie's gorgeous. Just just, <laughs> just give me one night with her, and we're good. Oh no. Um, and then uh, regardless of what happens, I get to like be myself again the next day. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. There might be some implications, but the other person has to deal with it. But 
<laughs> yeah, it's not I, your problem. It's the other person. If you say Jared from Subway, I'm leaving right oh. now. No. Oh. No. I, <laughs> he wants the that other was like a... Okay, I don't okay, okay, I don't, okay. I, I I'll, don't. Add, I'll add on to this, okay? <laughs> Whatever you do during your day, if you die, you're dead completely. Yeah. You can't go back to yourself. <laughs> ah, shit. All right. Well, <laughs> I was going to say Lil Wayne, but, uh, you know, Free that's... Wheezy. I was gonna kill myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but if I die, if if Heckles dies too, then I can't do that. It's not gonna work. Um, uh, I would say, personally, I would do that in Kanye West's body. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. That's that's you know I can't take that now. Darren just totally took that from me. No, so, no, if you want to, I mean, I'm not. No, I'm, I don't know. I'm not gonna personal? copy. So I guess I would be. Um, I guess I would be uh, Jim Carrey. Okay. Ooh, that's a great what? one. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah, Jim Carrey. Oh man, I didn't even, I didn't even think about myself. I'm kicking my ass. Do you mind? <laughs> right. What do you guys feel is the biggest misconception about rap and hip hop? Good question. It's a deep question. That is, that's a thinker. That's, uh, that's not really up your alley. So I, I would probably say that people think it's easy. It's yeah. it's not easy, um, at all. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's, it's that's actually really hard. That's pretty common, you know, because like I've seen rock bands get set up and everything, and having to set up like the speakers and the PA mm-hmm. and you know just everything, all the chords and all the instrument chords and the amps and all that stuff, drum sets even. You know, that's that's a lot longer than plugging in your laptop and putting a flash yeah. drive in it. You know, but uh, what a lot of people don't realize is you know somebody slaved over that beat for possibly days weeks you know trying to get the hi-hats to sound right yeah you know and if you do your own production you know you see you see all of that come to fruition when you're on stage so it's it's a lot more uh you know work than just showing up and putting beats on and just doing whatever uh so i yeah actually that's a really good really good answer is just that it's that it's easy because it's it's really not it's not as easy as as people think and a lot of people also stereotype rap and hip-hop with you know oh every song's about money bitches and hoes right right but that's you can blame the, the radio for that yeah mm. yeah true underground hip-hop rap is about life death. issues death yeah. um, and that it's not all about you know twerking and you know, even though some of that stuff is okay in a club setting, you know, great, yeah. but oh, yeah. overplayed on the radio. Yeah, no, it's, they're but definitely you know, some of the songs. best. Not, not something you should do in the middle of a park, though, at yeah. two in the afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, no, definitely not. Well, and, and to be fair, our music really isn't either. But that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do have songs about money, bitches, and all that. Just because we can. But we're but. diverse, <laughs> though. I mean, we yeah. we can rap about just anything, you know. Not freestyle. We suck at freestyling. Nope. And then uh, one of our last ones or questions for you is if you could write and perform a song either recorded or live with one hip hop legend that's alive and one that's dead, who would it be? Hmm. Like on the same track or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Well, for me, I would say uh, alive definitely eminem um and dead biggie okay i would really like to hear a track with us biggie and m that i, I think that'd be awesome <laughs> for sure yeah for, dead biggie for sure um alive i don't even know um there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot i would probably say busy bone Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's like that dude sick. just blows my mind every time I hear yeah, his voice. Yeah. No, good call though. Then dead, dead would be Biggie. Okay, nice. Yeah. What do you guys have coming up in the shows plans? Um, well, we got we got some some stuff in the works uh, that we're not really at liberty to talk about because all the details aren't really hashed out yet. But yep. Um, you know, we do have some big things going on. Um, got some big stuff going on. Uh, really big show. <laughs> but uh, we do, we are working on an album with Diamond District. Um, you know, we got uh, Jimmy Cloud9 uh, giving us beats. And, you know, we've been writing steady. Um, and so we're going to we're gonna try to get out um, an EP 
uh, having you know all of our songs like whore, the, all the songs that have samples in them mm-hmm. from other songs, uh, and that will be just kind of like to to, to give out to over. people or yeah, and then an official LP for for Diamond District as well. So, and uh, we actually we got a show in Sioux Falls next week. I forget what the venue is called. Um, so we'll be doing that, and then March nineteenth we'll be in Hamburg, okay. Iowa. Yeah, and that's uh, Murder Mike's uh, CD release party. Yep. <laughs> so. Besides Reburn Nation, any links or sites that you guys have for your group? Everywhere. We're on Facebook.com slash Inflicted. Um, I run our Twitter account at Real Inflicted. Uh, yeah, I have a I have a solo uh, SoundCloud with just, like, just whatever, like, side projects or whatever. Um, but we, and we also have a sound click, which, um, we have a ton of like older stuff on there. I forgot that even existed. Yeah. <laughs> Some sound old click. shit, like shake your dookie maker and all that <laughs> stupid shit. Like that's, <laughs> that's all in there. So yeah, yep. physical, like the first couple songs that this dude even recorded yep. are on, are on sound click. Oh. Yeah. Well, we will be for, or be sure to find those. Got one last question. Okay. Those that want to do rapper hip hop, any words of wisdom for them? Ooh. Keep doing it. Yeah, keep at it. Um, that's all I can say. I mean, a lot of a lot of these people, like nowadays, it's trying to be like, like youth sports. Like everybody mm-hmm. is, it gets like a participation trophy. You go to a show, and any, whether anybody sucks or not, you know, like, oh, you're awesome. And yeah, just don't fall into the false hype about yourself. Like, stay humble, grind. This shit's hard. And you gotta work yeah. hard to do it. Yeah, never. I mean, if it's a dream, then you just never quit. Just like with anything else, I would suggest to anybody if you're trying to do something that you love, just keep doing it. You do you, boo boo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we would like to thank uh, this week, um, Mike and Rich from yes. Inflicted. Thank you. Yeah. Guys. We'd like Lord, to thank you as on. well. For uh, we will be sure to be posting up the links you'll find on the video below and also on our our website and uh yeah so thank you guys and uh thanks for having us